So let me explain a little bit more before we get into our tithes and offering. We're going to do a 12-week series starting in October called The Purple Book. And here it is right here. This tool, and I say it's a tool, it's not the rule. You know what it is, the rule. The Word of God is the rule. But what I love about this tool is that every single page forces you to go into God's Word. So we, there's 12 lessons, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to challenge those in Voyager Church with something called the Purple Challenge. Option one, you can come to church on Sunday, listen to the Purple Sermons for 12 weeks, and I'm sure you're going to get a lot out of it. Option two, you can listen to all 12 sermons, but then pick up the book and do the lesson, the very short lesson, each week after you hear the message. This is it. Easy. Do it during the week. Reflect on it. And grow with the purple book combined with the purple sermons that I'll be giving. Option three. And it's the best option of all. Listen to the sermons. Pick up a book. And join a discussion group. Get other people who are doing the purple book together to just discuss what you guys filled out in the lesson. How does that sound? Sounds good. So we pray. Um, now, if you want to have an early order on these books, they're very cheap. And if you need it, I don't want money to be an obstacle or a hump. So if you need help with this, let us know. But um, there's a sign-up sheet. Jan will be uh, with Carolyn at the connections table. Sign up for a book because we're going to order. We got a bunch, but we, we can order some more. And uh, we're just preparing ourselves for Voyager Churchwide Purple campaign. This book has changed the lives of millions <coughs> across. They use it in missionaries, uh, use it in, in South America. There are prison ministries that are using this, that inmates are being changed and being turned to the, the, the truth of who Jesus Christ is in their life. So, the purple book, right here. Amen. And uh, if you want to look at it before you want commit or whatever, I have a copy right here. Alright, let's continue in the tithes and the offerings today. You know, God has been doing some great things. Uh, last week, a bunch of us went out to Camp Agape. And it was just so wonderful. I want to thank those who uh, helped out in the Next Step shelter this past Wednesday night. Can you give those folks a nice round of applause and appreciation? Those who either were there or those who donated. Um, so every second Wednesday, we have the Next Step. And uh, we want you all to be involved in that if you can. It's just a fulfilling time, right, Cheryl? Yeah. You go down there and, and you, you get to meet these families that are in the shelter there, some of them with babies, and uh, we get to serve them. And that's what Jesus calls us to do. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So let's pray for the tithes and offerings now as we uh, prepare for that. Lord Jesus, you are so good to us. Thank you, God, for giving this small church an opportunity to serve you in a big way. Father God, we uh, are making an impact in our community, especially with the homeless. And, and Father, those who are in need, God. And, and that's, that's it. That's all we want to do. We want to bring Jesus to those people who need them. So Lord, help us to be mobilized, God, and energized by the Holy Spirit to be your witnesses in our homes, in our community, in our state, and around the globe. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen and amen. Go ahead there, uh, Uncle Mike. Got the ushers going around. And thank you so much because God will bless the giver today amen. and every time. And it's our duty to worship Him by the giving of our tithes and offerings. So thank you so much as we move this uh, wonderful ministry forward. Talk about ministries. I'd like to just take a, a short portion of our service to recognize the church that we were birthed out of. I want to congratulate New Hope Oahu for 20 years of ministry. 
hearing the items. Can we give um, Pastor Wayne and, and you, Hope the Wahoo, a, a nice round of applause? Because I tell you something, although we are a standalone church, that was our mama. And, and, and by the grace of God and, and by the encouragement and the uh, uh, encouragement of Pastor Wayne, we got the chance to plant out this church called New Hope Voyager. So we are a, a representative, per se, of the 20 years of ministry that New Hope has, has done here in the islands. And it's nothing short of a, a, what you call a miracle and a revival in somewhat uh, that New Hope ministry. Amen? Would you agree? Yeah. So, so they've planted many churches like ours uh, all around the world. So I just wanted to mention and give thanks to God yes. for New Hope Oahu today because that's where our birth uh, started. Yeah? Yeah. And we are so proud to be here. Okay. Who doesn't have a Bible? Jen? See the hands? Allie? Marlene? You like what? Bada back down. Thomas, sub back down. If we can get some help uh, passing those out. All right. There you go. Keep your hands up so we can get you. Now, these Bibles... You can use them. Just give them back after. <laughs> no make like the days when I was in intermediate. Yeah? When a big guy used to come to me, bro, I can borrow your kind, surfboard. And that was the last I seen from the surfboard. He would go out walls and then he would come out in canoes. I don't see him. Thomas, we need one up there with Thomas. All right. All right. Thank you guys for... Uh, Passing out those Bibles. Now today we're going to continue in our series called G5. How many of you know what G5 stands for? Galatians, Galatians 5. <laughs> Woo! Wait, I'm going to wipe down a little bit. Who the hot of you? Everybody uh, enduring the heat of our weather? Yes. You know, I'm stuck in a rock in a hard place. Our, our living room has air conditioning, but every time we leave it on, I got to take out one loan for pay our electricity bill. <laughs> so, it was so funny. Last week, my wife and I said, we're going to, hey, we're going to be hardcore. We're going to be hardcore. We're going to save money. No turn on the air con. We just open up the window. Open up the window. So we're sitting watching TV. 20 minutes later, I said, turn that thing on. <laughs> turn. Oh. My goodness, I feel like one Cha Su hanging in Chinatown, I tell you. Wow. All right. But uh, be careful out there. Because, you know, these, these thunderstorms pop out out of nowhere. I got caught in it Friday morning. Like, drenched. <coughs> walking. I'm still walking. Yeah. Huh? So I was walking to work. But... Here's what happened. I got under the vineyard, uh, you know where Palama Selman. So I saw the cloud coming, and I'm walking down by what is that? Lanakila Elementary. So I'm walking down. I see the cloud coming. I look in, but I can make them. I can make them. I can make them. Right when I get under the overpass, boom! So I thought, well, I gotta be there in ten minutes. Charge them! Boom in the ring! Boom! Soaked to the shots. Man, I went, I, I think I created some puddles inside the fish tank this past week. But all good. I had dry clothes. was still dry. And we're all good. So be careful out there. Be careful. So G5, Galatians 5. We're continuing in the fruit of the Spirit. Speaking of which, and the, today's title is Show Your Fruit. We have apples available for everybody here. To take home today. Now you can take home these apples and eat them yourself. But here's our suggestion. Everybody grab a bag of apples. And use it as an evangelism to tool. Go around your community. Or go around after church. And hand out some apples. Amen. And say God bless you. Huh? Yeah. Or if you want to kick it up a notch. Take home a couple bag of apples. Or a big bag of apples. Bake some apple pies. 
Then give out the pies and say, the Lord blessed you with this pie. Now if you do that, I like this. <laughs> Some other suggestions this morning. Put them in the refrigerator. Cut them up. Put lihingui powder. Oh, you're about watering up there, eh? Yeah. And make Ziploc bags of lihing mui apple slices. And give them away and say, May the Lord wet your whistle. <laughs> Can so everybody take home some apples today, please? Because yes. if you don't, I'm going to have to take them home. Free. So please, free. free. Yeah. Just take apples, please, today. And it's perfect in what we're talking about. We're continuing in the fruit of the Spirit. If you were here last week, we started off the fruit with agape love. How many of you remember what agape love is? Agape love is that love that seeks out the best for the other person despite that person seeking out the worst for you. Oh, that is agape love. That's the byproduct of abiding in Him. You remember last week, I, I really wanted to lay a good foundation of the fruits of the Spirit. Because if we're not careful, we're going to all try and attain the fruit. We're all going to be grasping for the fruit. But in essence, what God wants us to do is focus on the branch abiding in the vine. Because if we focus on the abiding, then the fruit will come. Amen? Amen. It, it's almost like that other sermon I, I, I used the, the, uh, the floating and pouring the water in. A lot of times we focus on getting rid of our sin, but the real focus should be being filled with God. Because as we are filled with Christ, then the sin... It's taken away. So we got to get our heads around what the real focus needs to be. So the focus is being filled with God, which is the Holy Spirit, and having Him take away the sin. I remember when I first became a, a Christian, I was potty. I was on potty. You guys think you was on potty. I was hardcore. <laughs> In fact, I'm not even going to go through the list of narcotics that I've used to potty. But I'll say all of that to say this. When I got saved, I really wanted to change. But how many of you really wanted to change, but on our own, we couldn't do it? Amen. Come on now. Amen. We could not do it. And I would cry in front of the mirror. I would cry when I would go beat my pickup. You guys know what I mean, huh? Yeah. I would cry because I cannot help myself. I always pick up the phone and, oh, Bob. Wow. Well, go meet me down the time. Yeah, okay. Cry! Because I couldn't stop. So when I got to church, when I got saved, I still couldn't stop. So what I told God was, if you for real, you take the desire out of me. Because I'm not going. I like it. I like to do what I'm doing. I like to stay out all night. Hang out with these guys in the darkness. I like it. Good fun. So I'm not going to stop. If you for real, you stop me. Amen. Guess what God did? <laughs> he sucked the desire out of me. He sucked the desire out of you. So the focus is not trying to stop sinning. The focus is trying to let him do what you do. And you know, my prayer might, might have sounded arrogant. Yeah? Well, you know what? If you for real, and you stop me. It wasn't. It was in desperation. Yes. It was more of, I cannot do this. If you are God, I know you can do it. So you better do it. Yes. And yes. he showed up mighty. Woo. If he can do that for me, he can do that for each and every one of you in this place yes. today. So the focus is not trying to stop sinning. Our walk with God, the Word of God, is not a list of do's and don'ts. 
It's a love letter written from God to you, from Genesis to Revelation, on how much He cares for you, how much He loves you, on how much He wants to be with you intimately, how much He's, He loved you that He gave your, His Son, Jesus Christ, for you, and how that by receiving Him, you can now come to Him. Bottom line, that's what the Bible is. It's a love letter for you yes. to be in love with Him. That is the bottom line. The Bible is not a whole thing to follow like, I cannot do this. I cannot do that. Wow, I cannot do that either. Wow, that was good fun before. Now I cannot do that. That's not the point. The point is abiding. To let Him reside in you through the Holy Spirit. The point is to focus on abiding and being in line with Him every day. And you know what? The fruit will come. The sin will be erased. The fruit will be birthed. How many of you are tracking with me right now? Yeah. Amen. So the three beginning fruit that we talked about last week was love, agape love. That love that loves no matter what. God's agape love. Now only God can love like this. So unless we abide in Him, then we cannot even come close to trying to love like this. God needs to live in you for us to even come close to loving our neighbor like this. So that's God's agape love. Joy, we talked about. Were you more joyful this week? Yes. Not fair, Mom. You're always joyful. <laughs> Joy is a, is a completeness we feel and, and a wholeness because we're in God's presence. That's the definition of joy that we talked about last week. For example, I am so blessed that I found my calling in Jesus Christ. And you know, I don't know if I can even explain the joy I get coming up here and preaching the word to you. The joy I get for grabbing my guitar that I once used for my own gains for 20 something years and now I can turn around and use it to glorify the King of Kings. You don't know how much I enjoy that. That's the true joy that Jesus is talking about. To be in His presence, to be working under His sovereignty, to be really being guided by His Holy Spirit, and really using the gifts that He give, gave you to really further His kingdom. That is true joy. He wants that for all of us. And as we abide in Him, we get to hear Him clearer. So when we hear Him clearer, we know what our calling is. We know what our gifts are. We know what our spiritual gifts are. And if you need help with that, come and see me. I can help you with that. But the first step is to be in His Word, to being in prayer, to listen. Faith comes through hearing. And hearing by the Word of God. Amen. Amen? That's what the Word says. It doesn't say that faith comes through seeing. I'll believe it when I see it, the world says. Faith comes through hearing. So like uh, my favorite preacher, T.D. Jakes, just said, I just saw a clip of him. He said, so be careful on who is speaking to you. Be careful of what you're letting your ears hear. Because if faith comes by hearing, then we got to be careful on what we're hearing. That's why we need to abide in Him. We talked about peace last week. Now this peace is not just the absence of trouble we talked about, yeah? The world defines peace as being absent of trouble or, you know, like when our country is at peace, so that means there's no war going on, or maybe the world says that peace is just uh, being alone and there's no noise and you're having that time of peace and quiet. That's not what God is saying. This peace he's talking about is the tranquility, but it's not physical tranquility. It's the tranquility of heart. Knowing that God got you in the palm of his hand. That's the peace that he's talking about. It's the confidence. It's the godly confidence that God got this. God, I'm in trouble. God got this. Peace come over me. 
Everybody understand that piece I'm talking about? Now today we're going to move on and I was praying really, really hard about this next sermon. And if you know me, and I always say this, I'm really, really careful on what I preach about. Because every time I preach on something, the Lord decides to drag me through it. <laughs> so, so last week, last week was good. My week was filled with agape love, with, with the joy of the Lord, and with the peace beyond all understanding. And then I looked at the next fruit. And the next fruit on the list of fruit is patience. So the reason why I'm laughing is because when you preach on patience, God will test your patience that week. And I don't know about you. I knew this. And I was preparing myself. But I fell into what I was preaching against. I was concentrating on not being impatient instead of concentrating on just abiding in Him. So I told myself this week, Lord, I'm going to be patient this week. That's just like telling the Lord, Lord, I'm not going to eat this donut this week. And I'm going, Lord, I'm going to be patient. And then once I say it, once, once the comes out of my mouth, I don't know about you, but every single incompetent driver in all of Honolulu pulled out in front of me. I, 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 I strongly believe it. I pull out and I'm like, do I have to follow this guy, Lord? I mean, it's like, gee willikers. Golly gee willikers. That's the best words I can get. But I get guys cutting me off. I get anti about 900 years old. Pull in front of me and then slow down. I get brought up putting his right blinker on, but decide to go left. <laughs> I get crazy guys trying to overtake me. And then we meet each other at the stoplight anyway. And I give him the thumbs up like this. <laughs> and I said, Lord, what are you doing? He said, son, you're going to preach on patience this week. So I am testing your patience, grasshopper. <laughs> so we start with patience. And before we get into this, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your patience with me. And your patience with us. And Father, as we go through the fruit of the Spirit, God, let us remember that abiding in you, we get the results. And the results are these fruit. So, Father, I just pray for more fruit in our lives, Father God, and more fruit to come out of today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. 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 So, when we go back to the main scripture, it says this, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. What does this one say? I'm going to read this one. Wait, 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 wait. But the fruit of the Spirit... O Holy Spirit, the work in which His presence within accomplishments is love, joy, gladness, peace, patience, and what does it say in the Amplified? And even temper, forbearance, kindness, and goodness. We're going to talk about that today. Benevolence. Faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, humility, self-control, self-restraint, content. Continents. Against such things, there is no law that can bring a charge. So let's start with patience. 
Here's a story of a young Christian or someone who just got saved and he came to an older Christian that is a little bit more wise for help. And he asked this older and wiser Christian, will you please pray for me that I can be more patient, he asked. So they knelt together and the old man began to pray, Lord, send this young man tribulation in the morning. He said, Lord, send this young man tribulation in the afternoon. He said, Lord, send this young man. And the young man stepped in and said, wait, 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 wait. I didn't ask you to pray for tribulation. I wanted you to pray for patience. Then the older man said, ah, it's through tribulation which we learn patience. Well, if that's so, oh man, I should be really patient right now. But if that's so, we ought to begin by asking the question, what is patience? Let me give you some definitions. One definition of patience is this, is self-restraint which does not hastily retaliate against the wrong. It's pretty good. When someone does you wrong, how do you respond? With patience or anger? Okay, number two. Patience is the ability to accept delay or disappointment graciously. How do you deal with delay or disappointment? For some, it's really tough. Yet patience is the ability to accept it without coming angry or becoming upset. You know, this world we live in nowadays, it's a microwave world. I fall into it every day. I've become so spoiled with our, our smartphones and our, our tablets and our drive through You know what I mean? You know, my phone, if it just takes a nanosecond slower to load something, I'm like, come on! <laughs> or our, our computers have become so fast that we've been so accustomed that if, if the internet doesn't connect instantaneously, we're like, what's going on? Don't you guys remember dial-up? It was connect to the internet, go bathe, Make yourself something to eat, <laughs> then come back to your computer, then maybe you're connected to the internet. But we've come so spoiled. I mean, I'm at Jack in a Box the other day, and it took two minutes, and I'm like, geez, these guys. <laughs> what, they're making food for the whole world in front of us? Patience has been lost through just the overpowering of our society. Our society wants everything quick. Our kids, it's, it shows up in our kids. We want things now. You know, back in my day, Ma, I like a peanut butter jelly sandwich. What do you say? Please. <laughs> then we wait, we wait. Nowadays generation, Ma, I like with peanut butter sandwich. What do you say now? <laughs> Another definition of patience is patience is the powerful attribute that enables a man or woman to remain steadfast under strain and continue pressing on. Steadfastness, patience. And maybe that's where some of you are. Maybe some of you are dealing with a difficult circumstance today. Maybe you're raising a child. I'll tell you something. Tamale has been the tool of patience for Jamie and I for, for five years now. We've never experienced anything like that before in our life. Don't laugh, Reese. I'm going to send her to your house. <laughs> Maybe you're raising a child. Maybe you're caring for aging parents or uncle. Or maybe you're a loved one who is ill 
and you've spent long hours at the hospital or a nursing home with, you're weary, but patience is the quality that says, this too will pass. It's almost over. I can keep on keeping on. And finally, this is my favorite de definition of patience. Patience is a calm endurance based on the certain knowledge that God is in control. That's the hard part. Sometimes the, tra the tragedies that break our hearts can become the basis for a more beautiful design for our life. And without patience, we will never get to see that. Sometime through the hardship, God will bloom a beautiful flower in your life. But we need the patience to see that happen. Anybody relate with me right now? You know, I went to the uh, St. Louis Kamehameha game last night. And every time I go to a St. Louis game, these, these flashes of emotions and, and memories come up for me. Although it's been 30 something years. <laughs> I just loved being on the field. And, and, and to see the boys play, it's just very emotional for me. Because, you know, I didn't get to see my career out because I hurt my back my junior senior year and couldn't continue but as I look back it was this endurance and this patience and I didn't even know God back then but through that injury came the learning of playing guitar and with the guitar I made a living and with the guitar I worship him in heaven with the guitar he's allowed me to change people's life for him but without this what they call long suffering or the endurance of being patient. We will never see God blossom something out of the hardship you're going through this morning. Be patient with the hurts over which you have no control. In God's hand, they even become a source of healing, help, and even beauty. You know, in all honesty, I've learned a picture of patience uh, lately through my wife. Now, a lot of people don't realize what she does for the church. And I'm not tooting our own horn or whatever or, or putting her up on a pedestal. But I want to recognize that not only does she handle all the business side of our church, not only does she have to deal with a five-year-old with special needs, not only does she do all of that for free, she is caring for her uncle who's in his mid-70s who has severe dementia and Alzheimer's. And I have witnessed her develop this godly patience that is unexplainable. Now, I don't know how many of you have dealt with a loved one who had Alzheimer's or dementia but it's no use you get mad it's no use for you to get frustrated it's no use for us to spend sleepless nights because he or she said something or did something that aggravated you because it's the disease it's not them I mean take the other day we went <laughs> So Uncle lost his key again. So we drive all the way you know, from Paolo. We drive to Waikiki where he lives by himself. He lost his key. The neighbor calls and, hey, you know, Terry's locked out and we got to go open the door. So we go make him one key. And this is just the amazing, magical part about it. She and I go to the door. Say, Uncle, we made you a new key. Huh? A new key. So, he comes by the door, and he's looking at us. I see the key going to his head. And he steps back like this. We go into the house, and we say, okay, uncle, where's the key? What key? The key we just gave you. Oh, you never gave me one key. 
So we search his pockets. We said, in that second, I, who knows where the key went? I think Alzheimer's comes with this magical power to like make things disappear. And I'm like, we just gave you the key, uncle. Where's the key? Oh, you guys never gave me a key. We just gave you. She's like super cool. I'm in the back going, we just gave you the key. So we gave him the hot one, not we gave him the second key. And we put this big thing on the key. Like, was it this big? Well, maybe not that big. That's a fish story, I'm sorry. Like this big. We gave him the key. Say, okay, uncle, we're gonna put him over here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's walking around. Yeah. Okay, where's the key? What key? The key with the big thing on top. You guys never give me one key. And I'm in the back going, wow. And I'm watching her deal with this. I'm going, that's godly patience right there. Yeah. On top of everything this woman has to do. And she does that with godly patience. Glory to God. Because she's teaching me how to have godly patience. Amen? Amen. 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 That is godly patience. But you know what? The bottom line for me, and what I've learned about having godly patience, it, it's... It's that door that opens up God's best favorable outcome for you. And that's your first point today. Patience is the door to God's favorable outcome. What I mean by that, if we're not patient with people, if we're not patient with our spouse, with our kids, with ourselves, we're not going to allow God to do what He's doing. Because God has the favorable outcome for us, but we need the patience to see that out. You guys get me? There are many, many loved ones that come through our ministry that are cactus. And you might be one of those cactus. You know what I mean by cactus? That when we first meet you, you're so prickly that you poke us when we want to hug you. But like we were just talking, remember? We were just talking how it's those people that we got to be patient with. Because like cactus, if you get past the thorns, there's a richness of healing, like aloe. There's a richness of water that flows. There's a richness of love that can be found if we just be patient with the pricklies. Amen? Amen. You see, we miss out on God's glory if we're impatient. Some of us have zeal for God. Some of us want to do big things for God. But sometimes we got to be patient in the way He's developing us. We want to jump like the world says. We want to go from A to Z. But God is going, brother, I never even walked you to B and C yet. We have to be patient. Proverbs. Proverbs. 14.29 says, A patient man has great understanding, but a quick-tempered man displays folly. See, if we're patient with each other, the less we're going to get angry with each other. See, anger is a byproduct of impatience. I know. I come from a long generation of black belt impatience. I think dad needs to hear this message. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. My dad was one like this. I'm going to wait in the car. I'm going to give you two minutes. Wrong. Where dad went? He said he going to give us two minutes. He's gone. He'll give one. Pop, pop. If you're not out, but a second pop. He's on. Impatience is the root of our anger. But patience will bring wisdom and understanding. It also says in Proverbs 15, 18, a hot-tempered man stirs up dissension. So if our impatient ways is the root of our temper, then impatience eventually breeds dissension but a patient man calms a quarrel 
You see, an impatient man causes dissension. A patient man will be the ointment on the quarrel and stop the fight. Which one do you want to be? Which one do you want to be? We need to be patient. Patience is a virtue, people say. Amen? And again and again, the Bible teaches us that we need to develop this virtue in our life. We need to be patient because God has been patient with us. That's the bottom line for me. I mean, I walk my head into so many brick walls because I'm so hot-headed and I know like, listen, God has been so loving. God has been so patient with you and I. And who are we to be impatient with each other if God can be patient with us? Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, if God wanted to, he would wipe out this whole earth if he was impatient. Look at the state of it today. But he has that patience that endures and bears with all of our sinning. And he will not cast us off. In our dealing with each other, we must reproduce this loving, forbearing, forgiving, patient attitude of God. Because he has that attitude towards us. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay, I'm going to crack the next two fruits one time. Because they're very closely related. So patience is the next fruit. Now, if we continue to abide in Christ, guess what? We get to see the fruit of patience, of love, of joy, of peace. And we also get the fruit of kindness and goodness. Now, these are two closely related words. So I'm going to preach on them together. Kindness is a Greek word used here. Christotis. This word, in fact, is translated as goodness, basically. So the Greek word for kindness translates to goodness. But there is a, di a difference. Some uh, translations of 2 Corinthians 6.6, 6, and I'll read that. It says, we prove ourselves by our purity, our understanding, our patience, our kindness by the Holy Spirit within us and by our sincere love. Now, if you look at that word kindness in this verse, some translations translates that word not only as goodness, but as sweetness. I like that. So, Kindness is this sweetness that the fruit bears in our life. Also, the Greek used the word krestos. So the word for kindness is krestotis. The word for old wine or aged wine is krestos. Same word, same root. Why? Because that word for that sweetness or that goodness, crestos for old wine or aged wine, is this very pleasing taste, this sweetness of taste, this very not overbearing. Now, I don't want to promote drinking in this place, but you know when it's a good aged wine and when it's Mad Dog 2020. You know it. When it's a good aged wine, it doesn't have a bitterness. It doesn't have an overbearing taste. It's very mellow. It's very kind to you, to your taste buds. This is that, that rich meaning that, that Paul is trying to use in Galatians when he says kindness. It's that same kind of definition where Jesus says, For my yoke is easy to bear. And the burden I give you is light. In other words, the yoke of Christ does not chafe. How many of you know what chafing is? Now, chafing comes by, by, by heaviness and hard and rubbing and, and it's just a, a really, it's a drag. Jesus is saying this, this kindness 
that I'm talking about does not bring about chafing. It actually brings about a sweetness and a light, enjoyable attribute, this kindness. You guys getting the picture of what I'm painting here? Of, of what kindness is? So if number one, patience is the door to God's favorable outcome, then kindness is always lovely and sweet to those who receive it. So when people look at you and say, the fruit of the Spirit your, uh, of kindness is coming through, guess what? When we walk in a room, we're not chafing people. When you walk in a room and you're oozing with the fruit of the Spirit, you have a kindness about you that when people receive you, it's like this nice, sweet taste that's kind and light, not overbearing, not bitter. How many of you are getting what I'm saying? This kindness. Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay, it gets better. It's, it, it gets better. Now the word Paul uses for goodness, we just got kindness, right? And that word was Christotis. Now this word for that Paul uses for goodness is agathosune. This word in the Bible is kind of like agape. It wasn't used in secular Greek that often. Very rarely. Agathosune. Agathosune. Rarely used. And it's used here in the scriptures in Romans 15, 14. It says, I am fully convinced, my dear brothers and sisters, that you are full of goodness. There's that word. They use that word there. You know these things so well, you can teach each other all about them. You see, this is that Christ-like goodness. And I will get to the bottom line of the definition and the difference between kindness and goodness very soon. But check this out. Ephesians 5.9 says, For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Then in 2 Thessalonians 1.11 it says, to this end also we pray for you always that our God will count you worthy of your calling and fulfill every desire for goodness and the work of faith with power. Now I use these scriptures to really describe the goodness as opposed to kindness. Although they're close in relativity, they're quite different. Goodness is the virtue of that preserves the heart of Christ. Okay? So kindness would be that sweet, loving, very giving, as opposed to goodness. Now, goodness is preserving the heart of Christ. Now, let me explain. This Greek word is the most broad or widest for the word goodness. It is defined as a virtue equipped at every point. So what is the difference? Let me break it down before I wrap things up. Agathosune might and could rebuke and discipline. So that goodness might. So out of this goodness, it has the ability to correct or rebuke. Now, that goodness as opposed to kindness, Christotis, that kind of kindness can only help people. You see the difference? The goodness preserves the heart of Christ. So, in that case, that being good, having that kind of goodness can step in with love and say, hey, this is not right. That's the goodness. The kindness is the type that just comes in and just hugs and loves. You get the difference? There's goodness and then there's kindness. The kindness just love and hug, hug, hug. Now the goodness is the one that preserves the good of Christ. So it can go, hey, in all goodness, stop doing that. Amen? So now you kind of know the difference. So let me 
paint one last picture so you we make sure we get this difference. Jesus showed agathosune or goodness when overturning the tables in the temple when they turned the temple into a bazaar. You remember that part? Yeah. Where Jesus says, you know, he took the tables and he flipped them over. Because they were selling doves and things for, for the worship sacrifice. He said, this is God's worship house, man. Don't turn this into a marketplace. So that was an act of goodness. We can have a debate after church if you want. Because I get into this all the time. Wasn't it an act of anger, Pastor? So that rationalizes me. I can go overturn the table if it's like, you know, for a good purpose. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to slap his head. Because I have righteous anger. No. Agathosune is a goodness. And out of that goodness is why he turned the tables. He said, hey, this is not for that. I'm preserving, I'm preserving the heart of my father. That's goodness. Now, Jesus showed Chris Totus when he was kind to the sinning woman who anointed his feet. You see the difference? Goodness and kindness. So as we continue to abide in Christ, these fruits start to rise up in us. A godly patient that doesn't give up on themselves and others. Be patient because God has been patient with you. As we abide in Christ, the fruit of kindness will well up in us. In all of our dealings. This brings the sweetness of God that warms the heart of others. Leaving them in an embrace of Christ's love. And finally, if we continue to abide in Christ, the fruit of goodness the strength to do good, showing Christ-like virtue in every area of your life. I don't know about you, but I want to abide more in Christ so I can have more fruit like this in my life. So this week, go show your fruit. Go show your fruit. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's stand. I got a few uh, announcements. Yeah! <laughs> Everybody stand to your feet. For those of you sleeping, wake up! All right. Before we close with a song, I want to remind everybody that we do have Wednesday Bible study service at 888 Evil Uh Please show up about 6.30 uh, if you can. That will be good because I don't. I usually come late because I'm usually rushing from somewhere but please get there early so we can get you up because you need a code to get in um, uh, that starts at 6.30 well doors open at 6.30 we usually get started uh, a little before 7 we have worship we share the word we break up into small groups and it's awesome come and join us for that and uh, again in a few weeks we are starting The purple campaign here at Voyager and uh, you saw the video earlier and uh, I, I, I put out my purple challenge to all of you you remember option one you don't need the book you can just come listen to the sermons that's option one that's the minimal option option two pick up the book there's a sign up sheet outside it's it's a great tool that will change your life if you commit to this I will guarantee your walk with Christ will go sky high after those 12 weeks. I guarantee it. If you go through this book alone, but option three is the best option. Sign up for the book, plug into a group, a discussion group, that, that so everyone can share their hearts. Also, don't forget to return the Bibles at the table right here. And um, let's see, apples. We got tons of apples. And let's use it as a tool to bless other people. So take a bag of apples, Give them out. Say, God bless you in the name of Jesus. Take them home. Make apple pies. Pass out pies. Take them home. Slice them up. Make them with leading mui in a ziplock. And bless your friends with them. And say, God loves you to uh, the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 Do you feel loved by God today? Yes.
Are we going to try and abide in God so we can be more patient? Yes. Hallelujah. That's going to be my goal this week and last week and every week. I promise I will not yell at the Jack in the Box lady anymore. I promise. <laughs> because of my impatience. How many of you did this? And you, I just said nothing to do with the sermon. Oh, maybe it does. It does it has everything to do with the sermon. So I, I drive up. I drive up. And it's been a long day. And you know what? I'm a pastor, but I'm a man. And I'm so terrible. And I don't mean it. Because sometimes my voice is just loud. But you, you know what I hate is when I'm trying to think about what I want to order off the menu. And she goes, and then? And then what you like? And what you like? Is that it? Is that... And all I said was, just wait. And I said, sorry, Lord. But we all need to abide more in Christ. Amen. So we can show the fruit of the Spirit. Especially the pastor. So pray for me this week. And I'll pray for you. How's about that? We'll go pray for abiding in Christ so the fruit of patience, goodness, and kindness will be evident in your life. Hallelujah.